Globally, women-led startups attract under 5% of venture capital. In Southeast Asia, all women founding teams draw about 2% of deal value and 5% of deals. Only around 18% of named inventors on international patents are women, and the gap widens in deep tech. Physicist turned investor Alexandra Vidyuk has lived it, and she says buys shows up before deals are even discussed. Most of the rooms, I am the only woman in the room. And it's, you can see a lot of bias as well. Like early in my career, when I used to come in the room, people think that I'm a comps or marketing lady, not a general partner who is actually leading the deal. So this, the bias is there, it's subtle, but it's there. So I used to, like now, now is it at my advantage because I attract more attention. I'm like a magnet for people. So I always have more insights, more deals, and more talent approaching me. The talent is there, but family duties and risk roles still sideline many women. Then how do we get more of them to write deep tech checks or even found the next startup? Well, Epic Angels thinks it may have the answer. In Singapore, Epic Angels calls itself Asia's largest female-only investor collective. All women investors, right? That that is the thing, and it's it, there's a big misconception that we fund female founders, but we we turn it around, we flip it, and we say we are 100% female investors. And it's good to understand that we are not feminists, we're not activists. We just want to create this axis, and we believe that women make great angel investors. But we want to also create that comfortable space for them to learn, to be able to ask questions that they may be a bit insecure about, like oh, what would others think of me, and that just works different if we're all women um, and that has worked really well. Epic Angels open data rooms, review 100 deals a month and shortlist four for group diligence online across 45 countries. Hester's point? Women don't lack talent, just visibility and access to how venture works. That's backed by Cameron Priest, a prominent tech founder and investor who successfully exited from Trade Gecko. When you see people that look, feel and put their pants on when they go on a time, just like you, and they're doing this much more ambitious, grandiose thing, I think it unlocks something in your brain to realize, oh, yeah. if they can do it, I can do it. It's that Steve Jobs quote, which is like everything in this world is made by someone no different from you. Um, and I just think that's the biggest thing, get, getting exposure. Um, it's exposure therapy. Everyone needs exposure therapy to what ambitious success looks like. And founders like Soraya show why that access matters. A chemical engineer and nanotechnologist and a mother of three, she built her startup around carbon quantum dots, a greener alternative to toxic nanomaterials. I did the business when my children were grown. My youngest child at that time was already seven years old. It was manageable because being a founder and doing a business, it really takes a lot of your time. So I think for a female founder, the support system at home is extremely important. If the business ecosystem understands the challenges that women um, go through and are empathetic to what we uh, to our needs and are willing to support us in whatever um, that we are going through and the phases and the seasons of life that we have to go through I think then um, there will be um, even more women who would be successful in in building businesses. Governments are nudging change. Singapore now asks listed firms to set board diversity targets. Women hold roughly a quarter of top 100 board seats. A new workplace fairness bill bans discrimination. And startup SG Equity boosted deep tech co-investment by 337 million U.S. dollars. If one million women invest 10K, that moves 10 billion. And that starts to become a real river. From investors to inventors and mothers in between, they're reshaping who builds deep tech. Gracian, CNA, Singapore.